Hey guys, welcome back to Baker Arsenal, and today we're going to be discussing a little bit more about the types of rifling we have and a little bit more in depth into what Hammerforge barrels are really about. So what makes Hammerforge barrels a big deal? Let's find out. Your barrel is subject to a violent life and the higher the powder charge and smaller the projectile, the harder its life is. Think about it. The amount of heat produced is directly proportional to the amount of burnt powder to the available areas for that gas to escape. A super spicy round like the 22250 uses a tiny projectile pushed by a larger powder charge through a tiny barrel, as opposed to a straight walled 4570 which has plenty of bore for those hot gases to escape from. Of course, we use big powder charges behind a small projectile to create high velocity, low bullet drop, long range, and flat trajectory. A straight walled caliber like the 350 Legend, 450 Bushmaster, or 4570 hit like a freight train at short distances, but wane quickly. So we use these lighter, small diameter bullets in all of our high power calibers, right? Well, they create a lot of heat. This isn't a real big deal if you're shooting one or two shots at a white tail in the woods and then putting your gun away for the season. It becomes a big deal when you're running your AR-15 in a three gun, ripping off long strings of fire, or you're at a car being course for a week, dumping hundreds of rounds through it rapid fire. To be fair, a cut barrel or a button barrel is more than adequate for the weekend marksman, and we proudly carry the barrels manufactured using these technologies. So what's the difference between these practices? The first one, cut barrels. Cutting barrels is an old practice to the tune of 500 years or more. This would easily make it the oldest rifling cutting method in the world. The bore of the barrel billet is bored out and reamed to create a smooth and true bore surface. Then a cutter is inserted into the bore that cuts out the rifling grooves a tiny bit at a time. Each pass removes a minute amount of material and either the barrel or the cutter is slowly rotated to achieve the correct rifling twist. Next, we've got the most common type of rifling and that's button rifling. This is probably the most common method of rifling in modern barrel manufacturing. The barrel is bored and finished slightly smaller than the finished caliber for this process. And then the carbine button forms the rifling impressions in the barrel. The carbine button is either pushed or pulled through the bore forming the rifling grooves. Last but not least is cold hammer forged. Hammer forging is the process that treats the steel in a manner that promotes the best tolerance to heat. Heat is public enemy number one to barrels. Every single shot melts a tiny amount of rifling, so if you shoot a lot, this adds up. The cold hammer forge process uses a hydraulic system to use a carbine or hardened steel hammers to form the barrel material. The end result is highly smooth surface. In short, cold forging shapes the barrel from the outside in, whereas a button rifle forces the rifling from the inside of the barrel out. Well, how does this work? After the smooth bore has been drilled and smoothed in the barrel blank, a mandrel is inserted into the barrel blank, which will cut the rifling. The barrel is hammered from the outside, cutting the impressions into the barrel material. Hammer forging is really expensive. The machinery and processes are costly. So anyone producing hammer forged barrels is serious about the process. The cold hammering process strengthens the barrel. Even though that seems counterintuitive, it's true. Hammering aligns the molecules in the metal creating a stronger overall material which is more tolerant to high heat over the long run. Here's the wild part. A barrel blank starts out about half or less the finished length of the finished barrel, but of a much larger diameter. The hammering machine applies about 50 tons of pressure on the metal, elongating it and pressing it down to the finished shape and diameter, which also impresses the rifling inside of the barrel. There are other advantages too. It reduces wasted materials since the barrel is forged into a final shape instead of the milled down. The forging process improves the mechanical properties of extruded parts. Basically, the improved reaction to heat comes from the forging process and how it tempers the metal rather than the properties of the raw metal itself. The forging actually changes and increases the strength through the process. But a lot of manufacturers don't traditionally use a cold forge process because the cost of the machinery is very high. It is our commitment to our customers and to excellence that Bear Creek Arsenal has invested in cold forgery. We believe that cold forge barrels are a great option for a lot of our customers and we want to make sure you have the very best tools at your disposal. 
at a price that is very much on point. So that's it for the types of rifling. But if you want to learn a little bit more about what we do here at Bear Creek Arsenal, just subscribe to our channel and go look at our website, bearcreekarsenal.com.